If I hadn't seen it, I wouldn't believe it. Some say I'm bugging out. You changed my whole world. You did it right in front of my eyes. Whoa, you got me in a daze and I don't understand your ways of time. But what you done, I owe you my love. For blessing, for blessing me, 
morning, Prince of Peace Church family. We are so glad to have you worship with us today. We're here to celebrate the Lord. We love to praise the Lord because we love him and we know that he loves us. On behalf of Pastor Grady, feel free to sing, clap, and write in the chat during the service. This is Youth Sunday, so it'll be celebrated by us, the youth. Enjoy the service. We will now be blessed with the song by the youth. Good morning, church. I will be reading Psalm 47, verses 1 through 9. Clap your hands, all peoples. Shout to God with loud songs of joy. For the Lord, the Most High, is to be feared, a great king over all the earth. He subdued peoples under us and nations under our feet. He chose our heritage for us, the pride of Jacob, whom he loves. God has gone up with a shout. The Lord with the sound of a trumpet. Sing praises to God. Sing praises. Sing praises to our King. Sing praises. For God is the King of all the earth. Sing praises with a psalm. God reigns over the nations. God sits on his holy throne. The princes of the peoples gather as the people of the God of Abraham. For the shields of the earth belong to God. He is highly exalted. May God add a blessing to the reading and hearing of his holy word. Heavenly Father, I want to just confide in you and talk to you for not just me, but the youth at Prince of Peace today. I want to talk to you about um, being supported or being able to support someone and being being able to be vulnerable. Um, having support is something that can really twist your perspective on something and when somebody says yes i believe and yes you can do it it can really change somebody's perspective and i know because i've had somebody do that for me um but i just want to 
talk to you, oh God, and tell you my concern for um, for the young people, for the youth that I know and the youth that been to peace. Um, my concern is that people aren't listening when you go to sit down and talk because you are afraid or concerned about something they just they don't listen they make it about them and they aren't paying attention to your concern and your need um and i just want to i just want to kind of I don't know support that because it is it's really hard to kind of take that it's really hard to go to a loved one or somebody that you trust and tell them that you're hurting or that you are struggling with something and for them not to listen um and I just want to talk to you about it I want you to give these young people protection and I want you to give them clarity maybe I shouldn't talk to this person about this or maybe I shouldn't confide within them they should confide in you oh God they should talk to you they should pray and just say Lord give me some clarity give me give me another way to look at this because my perspective is not the best and it's is this vulnerability is this vulnerability that they use towards you oh god and they just they just give you they give you their emotions they say here help me fix it please and and we we as youth we need that we're not just within you within our trusted adults and our friends we need this in everybody that we talk to, we need somebody to trust, oh God. But this, the twisted society, they, they drive us away. They drive us away and say, no, I shouldn't do that. That's not cool. But it's cool to talk to you, oh God. It's cool to say, Lord, I need your help. It's okay. And, and we need the youth to know this. We need them to know this. We need them to say, it's okay for me to talk to God. It's okay for me to talk to my mom and say, hey mom, I'm struggling with this. Can we talk about it? But I need you to change the hearts of our parents, oh God. I need you to tell them to listen. Don't talk, just listen. Listen to what I have to say. Don't try to fix it for me before I even tell you what's wrong. Tell me, listen to my issues. Listen to that struggling voice, the trembling voice you hear in your child. And, and let them be vulnerable. Let them tell their parents. Let them be brave and strong and say, hey mom, we need to talk because some of my friends, my own friends, and I'm sure some of um, our youth at Prince of Peace are struggling with this. We're struggling with being vulnerable because it's not cool. But what they don't understand is that it is. It's good to talk. It's good to be able to say, hey, I need to talk. It's good to say, hey, I have a word. I need to say something. I have a part in this conversation. How are you going to tell me what my issues are? I need I need to say something. But these youth don't understand how to. They were never taught to. And so I just want you to give them guidance. Give them a path to walk on and to say, okay, Pick this up, pick this up. Now I know how to say that I need help. And that I need somebody to confide in. So I just want you to give them that one thing, oh God. I want you to teach them how to be vulnerable. And I want you to teach them how to use it to their advantage. 
And I want you to teach them that it's okay. It's okay because they have you. They have you as their right hand. Don't be afraid. Just trust our Lord God. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Good morning, church family and friends. I'm here to lift up an offering, which means it's time to give. God has blessed us to be a blessing. And when we think about it, God has been a righteous and just God. He gives us what we stand in need of. He gives us what we desire. So through your giving, your faithful and obedient giving, God has blessed us in many different ways. Just the mere fact that God blessed you with a reasonable portion of health, that's a blessing. That job that you had or have, you didn't deserve it. You probably wasn't qualified for it, but God blessed you with it. That house you live in, that was a blessing from God. That car that you drive, also a blessing. Now, most of the people think that God blesses us with either financial or monetary blessings. But as you can see, God blesses us in many different ways because God can do anything that he wants to do how he wants to do it, and any time he wants to do it. So now, the next thing you see will be instructions telling you how you can give. And remember, God loves a cheerful giver. God is always on our side. Whatever you've prayed about, if you would give, the church will be blessed to be a blessing, and God will get the glory. So I ask that you pay attention to the screen and give whatever God puts on your heart. God bless you, enjoy the service, and have a blessed day. Let me hear you sing, bless, bless, bless In the morning, in the noonday, in the nighttime We're blessed, bless, 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 bless We're blessed, we're blessed, we're blessed Since thou hast walked a right leg As a light in a dark land Since thou was placed in thy heart All the Lord's command Set the above nation and cast thy enemies away. He's standing up within thee. So let me hear you say.
sermonic text comes from the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verses 1 through 2. I'll be reading from the English Standard Version of the Bible. And if you faithfully obey the voice of the Lord your God, being careful to do all his commandments that I command you today, the Lord your God will set you high above all the nations of the earth. And all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you if you obey the voice of the Lord your God. Amen. I'm chasing after you, no matter what I have to do, cause I need you more and more. I'm chasing after you, no matter what I have to do, cause I Bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is awesome. He's worthy to be praised. I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praise will continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make its boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Levites for that awesome reminder that we ought to be chasing after God because we need him more 
and more. Amen. It's preaching time, but before we go to the Lord in prayer, I just want to thank you one more time for uh, blessing me at the uh, anniversary, third anniversary last week. I'm truly blessed and encouraged and so grateful to everyone that prayed and sowed a seed and uh, showed up and prayed and praised with us last week. I love you dearly. God bless you. All right, there is a word from the Lord, but let us look to the Lord in prayer. Eternal God, our Father, we love and adore you. We bless you, and it's preaching time. So, Lord, I need you right now. I need you uh, to powerfully proclaim in and through me that which you want the people to hear. Lord, give me conviction in my heart, clarity of speech, and my mind be focused, Lord, that you would deposit and ultimately convey a word, truth, power, encouragement to your people. Please be magnified in this, the preaching experience. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. The Sermonic text has already been read. That's Deuteronomy chapter 28, verses 1 and 2. I want to preach from the subject, the blessing of God's faithfulness. The blessing of God's faithfulness. Beloved, if we are going to be honest with ourselves, then we have to admit many of us, if not all of us, struggle with the concept of obedience. There's something within us that doesn't really care for this idea that I need to obey somebody else, that this this, this idea, this concept uh, of obedience somewhere within us rubs us the wrong way. Well, why, preacher, why, why is it so difficult for us to obey? Why, why does it seem that obedience rubs us the wrong way? And perhaps maybe a few of you who are listening, maybe you don't struggle with obedience you're perfect in everything that you do, but for the rest of us, uh, we, we, we struggle with this idea, this concept of obedience. Why? Why, why? why do we struggle? Well, first, perhaps if you're black in America, then th this idea of, of, of obedience reminds us of chattel slavery when uh, these so-called slave masters would use the Bible and abuse the scripture to encourage and to force and to, to, to really uh, have the slaves obey their masters as, as somehow that was pleasing and glorifying to God. That, 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 that me obeying my master who is simultaneously harming me and dehumanizing me doesn't really sit well with me. Or perhaps you're a wife or a former wife and you uh, have been married to a domineering dictatorial husband that uses the scriptures to try uh, to control and to dominate um, the scripture wives obey their husbands. And, and so it leaves a bitter taste in your mouth, this idea of obedience, because it was used in the context of dominion and control. Perhaps you're a child, uh, a youth, and your parents constantly tell you to obey them. And there's something in you that, that wrestles with obedience, but perhaps it's because you feel deeply that they really don't know what's best for you, that they're really just trying to stifle your fun and, 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 and stifle the things that you're trying to do. Or perhaps maybe it's hard for you to obey your parents because they're hypocrites. The very things that they tell you not to do, they do. They tell you not to lie and they lie. They tell you not to curse and they curse. And they tell you to obey authority, but they're not obeying the authorities in their lives. And so it's hard for you to obey someone who is not walking the walk. Well, let me give you uh, an encompassing reason for why it's hard for us to obey. And that is because we're born in sin. And all of us have this insatiable desire within our members, our flesh, that, that wants to do what it wants to do. That, that doesn't want to be subject to the authority, to the covering, to the oversight of anybody else, but, but wants to be God. 
and do what they want to do, when they want to do it, how they want to. All of us have this within ourselves, this desire to answer to nobody, but to be God where I don't have to listen or obey anybody else. I can do what I want to do. I can be the captain of my soul and I can be the master of my own fate. There's a part of us that struggles with obedience because it means we have to be subject to the authority of somebody else. But here's the problem. Problem is God has declared and God has decreed that the way he blesses his people is inextricably connect, connected to their obedience. That the way God blesses us is tied to how we obey him. God is the supreme authority. He's the sovereign creator and ruler. And he has determined that the way I'm going to bless you is through your obedience. That if you obey me, then I'm going to bless you. But if you disobey me, then not only will I take away the blessings, but I will enact judgment and curses upon you. That, that's the reality of our text. Moses, uh, the writer of the text and the leader, the mouthpiece of God for the nation of Israel at the time of the text is in the midst of his third sermon, his third address to the people of Israel. Deuteronomy chapter 27 through 30, Moses address, addresses the people and in this address, he lists the blessings and the curses that are tied to the covenant agreement between God and Israel. In chapter 28 of Deuteronomy, the first 14 verses are the blessings spelled out. God specifically uh, spells out the blessings that he will pour upon Israel if they obey him. But then there are 54 verses uh, where God lays out the curses that he will enact on Israel if they disobey him. And it's real simple. Um, the law of Moses, the law of God can really be distilled very simply like this. If you faithfully obey me, I will bless you real good. But if you faithfully disobey me, I will curse you real bad. That, that's, that, that's really the essence of the law. That, that's really what Deuteronomy 28 says, um, blessings and cursing. So we have a choice. If we obey God, then we can be blessed. Disobey God, we'll be cursed. Well, that, that's specifically that, that law, that law of Moses was specific to the people of Israel. At that time, they were in covenant relationship with God. That, that's, that was for them. But, but here, here's the bad news. I'm going to give you some bad news and then I'm going to give you some good news. I don't want to just leave you with the bad. I'm going to give you some bad, but then I'm going to give you some good news. Here's the bad news. The bad news is, as I said, the first 14 verses are the blessings that if Israel were to obey, God would bless them immeasurably. He would bless them going out, coming in. They would be the head, not the tail. They would be the lender and not the borrower. They, that their children would be blessed. They would prosper in everything that they they touch. If they obeyed the voice of God faithfully, then God would bless them immeasurably. But if they didn't, if they turn into other idols, and if they disobeyed the voice of God, God would curse them real bad. And the, the bad news is Israel didn't keep their end of the bargain. They disobeyed God consistently and faithfully, and so they were subject to the curses of God. They were cursed. They were punished. They were judged. They were sent to Babylon. They were in exile because of their repeated disobedience. That, that's the bad news. But, but the bad news for us is that we are just as sinful. We are just as stubborn and stiff-necked as Israel. And so we have the same problem today that Israel had back then. That, that's the bad news. That, that, uh, Apart from a miracle, we are under the same judgment and curse and inability to keep our part of the covenant. Apart from a miracle, we're short. We're doomed. 
we're destined. That's the bad news. But but can I give you the good news? I, I'm, I'm going to give you the good news in one word. And that word is Jesus. That That's that's the good news. The, the, the good news is what, 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 what Jesus does, first thing Jesus does is he keeps the righteous requirements of the law. He fulfills this covenant of the law because he is perfectly obedient. He faithfully obeys God, obeys the voice of the God. And so Jesus, watch this, he earns the blessing. But not only does Jesus earn the blessings for us, watch this, but he also becomes the curse for us. Because even when Israel disobeyed, they got cursed. Well, we were under the curse of condemnation, the curse of eternal damnation. But what Jesus did on the cross, he became the curse for us. He paid the price for us. And so God's punishment, Jesus absorbed on himself and we were redeemed and we were mercifully forgiven. That's, that, that's the good news of this text, that even though we struggle in obedience like Israel because of Jesus, that when we put our faith in Jesus, watch this, we are now eligible and entitled to the blessings that God intends for us because all of the blessings of God are now found in Christ. At the moment you trust Jesus, the moment that you put your faith in Jesus alone for salvation renders you eligible and entitled to the blessings of God that are laid out even in the text. That because of Jesus, that God wants to bless us real good. Here it is. God has a heart to bless us, but because he's holy, his holiness demands justice. That's the great thing about Jesus. Jesus not only Amen. Obtain the blessing, but now he fulfilled the justice and wrath of God so that we are eligible, all those who put their faith in Jesus Christ. Here's, here's the good news of the text. It's not that we're faithful. That, that's not the good news of the text. The good news of the text is God is faithful. The, the real blessing is not the material blessings that, that God wants to give to us. The true blessing is the faithfulness of God. That even when we don't do what we're supposed to do, God is going to find a way that he is going to bless us. So, so here it is. Wait a minute. So even though every believer in Jesus Christ is entitled to the blessings of God. We're eligible to receive the blessings of God. Paul says in Romans chapter 8, we are heirs with God and we are heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. So every believer of Jesus Christ is eligible to the blessings of God. Well, if we who are saved, who are believers, are, are eligible and entitled to the blessings of God, why are so many of us not blessed as we should be? Why, why, why are so many of us living beneath our means and we are living as if we are not blessed? Well, here, here's the reason. Even though you're entitled to the blessing, even though you, amen, are eligible to receive the blessing, that doesn't mean you have access to the blessings of God. And that's the struggle for many believers of Jesus Christ is, is, is we're entitled to it. We're heirs and we're entitled to the inheritance of God. Ephesians 1, 3, we're blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. But the, even those blessings have earthly ramifications, but we don't know how to access those blessings. Let, let, me, let me see if I can help you understand with an illustration. Um, it, the year was 1999. It was... November. It was a beautiful day. I just came back from our, from our honeymoon. And so I woke up that morning, that Saturday morning, and I had one thing on my mind. Well, actually, I had two things on my mind. The, the second thing I had on my mind was I, I wanted to go to the bank. You see, uh, during our, our wedding, many people blessed us by writing checks 
Um, and then they wrote the checks to Jindayo and Kelly Grady to Mr. and Mrs. Grady. And so we, we, we left the checks at home, went on our honeymoon, and now we are back and it's time for me to go to the bank and cash these checks. And so I sit down at the desk and I, I, I endorse, I sign my name on the checks and then I, I head to the bank. And it's a beautiful fall day and I'm excited. I'm in a great mood. And so I go to the teller and I said, here, I, I want to cash these checks, um, you know, and I'm in a festive mood. And then I noticed that her disposition changes and she looks down at the checks and she squints. And then she says these words to me, I'm sorry, Mr. Grady, but I can't cash these checks. Now, my mood instantly changed from, from, from being pleasant and joyful. Now I'm irritated. What, what do you mean? almost indignant. What What do you mean you can't cash these checks? I'm trying to figure out why she can't cash these checks. Well, you know, I'm, I know I'm black, but you know, I, I've, I've cast checks before. Um, that, that probably is not it. And then I thought perhaps these daggone church folks probably wrote me bad checks. Can't trust these church folks. No, it wasn't that. Then, then, then she says these words to me. Um, she, see, the reason why I can't cash these checks, Mr. Grady, it's because the checks are made out to two people, but only one of you has endorsed it. If you want the funds to be released to you, both people have to sign their name. Both people have to endorse the checks. And that's how it is with the blessings of God. All of the blessings of God are in Christ. And so for God to release the blessings to us, not only do we have to endorse the blessings, but Jesus also has to sign off. He has to endorse. And we keep going to the bank of heaven trying to receive the blessings without Jesus endorsing the blessings. And here's what I'm trying to tell you, that when you learn how to make Jesus your head and you trust Jesus even not just for salvation, but even for the blessings in your life, then you can have access to the blessings that God has ordained for your life. Let, let me give you three strategies, according to this text, that will help you to access your blessings um, that I'm going to take my seat. The first thing I want you to notice, first strategy, if, if you're going to access the blessings, first thing you've got to do is trust God's faithfulness. You got to trust God's faithfulness. Here it is. The, 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 the main takeaway of the text is not if you obey, you'll be blessed. That, that's not the takeaway of the text. The takeaway is that I can't obey. That I will never be able to obey God to his satisfaction by myself. But through faith, if I trust God, then by faith, I can please God enough. Here's how it is. We trust the faithfulness of God. I mean, the text, let, let's read verse one. Listen to what it says. It says, if, and if you faithfully obey the voice of the Lord, your God, being careful to do all his commandments that I command you today, the Lord, your God will set you high above all the nations of the earth. In verse 2, and all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you if you obey the voice of the Lord your God. Don't, don't, don't miss this. Um, in, in the English, it doesn't give us, doesn't do justice for us, but, but the word the Lord your God in, 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 in the Hebrew, that, that, that's, that's Yahweh. And the, the word your God means that it's a personal relationship that 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 your the Lord your God means that there's a covenant relationship with God now now here, here's here's the point Yahweh in the Hebrew means the self-existing God that God is transcendent he exists by himself and that God doesn't need anybody or anything to help him fulfill his mission so here it is in the text he is entering or he is recapitulating the covenant agreement that God has with Israel. In Exodus chapter 19, God 
proposes to Israel and says, Israel, I want to marry you. I want to be your husband and I want you to be my wife. They agree. And so now they're entered into covenant relationship. And in our text, Moses is just uh, uh, recapitulating the finer details of that covenant agreement. If you obey me, I'll bless you. If you disobey me, I will curse you. H here it is. As I said before, there were only 14 verses of blessings, but 54 verses of cursing. And here's why. One, G God wants you to understand very specifically what happens when you disobey. But, but secondly, he here's the reason. God already knew that Israel would not hold to their end of the bargain. God already knew even before he entered into the covenant that they would not be able to keep their part of the bargain. So God, here it is, he says, even though this is a conditional covenant, if you obey, then I'll bless you. If you don't, then I won't. God's saying, here it is, even though you didn't hold to your end of the bargain, because I'm faithful, I'm still going to hold my end of the bargain. Second uh, Timothy 2.13 says it like this. Even when we are faithless, God remains faithful because he cannot deny himself. Th this is the faithfulness of God that he enters into a promise with us that if you trust me, I'll take care of you. If you obey me, I'll, I will bless you. And when we don't trust and when we disobey, God then finds a way for him to keep the terms of the covenant. That's why that even though we don't deserve to be saved, God says that if you trust me, I'm, I'll, I'll make sure that you'll never lose your salvation. That's the faithfulness of God, that even when we don't do right and we don't hold to our terms of the covenant, God finds a way to still do what he promised he will do. And so when we, when we are trying to obey God, instead of trying to perfectly keep the law ourselves, we ought to trust the faithfulness of God. I like how Paul says it like this in Philippians 1, 6, that I'm very confident of this very thing, that he that began the work is going to bring it to completion. My, my confidence is not in my ability to obey God. My confidence is in the faithfulness of God that what he started in me, he is going to finish. That, that what he started in me, he is going to bring to fulfillment, bring to complete. My job is to trust him and to depend on his faithfulness. That's what David says in Psalm 37, verse 3. He says, trust in the Lord and do good and feed off of God's faithfulness. That, that my, my, my confidence is not in myself, but I'm depending on the Lord's love. I'm depending on the Lord's grace. I'm depending on the Lord's mercy. I'm depending on the Lord keeping his word. I'm trusting the character of God. Now listen, what I love about God is that God doesn't ask us to depend on him until he first proves that he's dependable. So even now in, in Deuteronomy chapter 28, God has already proven, amen, that he is dependable, that his character is trustworthy. He's already, amen, provided for them. He's already delivered them from Egyptian captivity. He, he has already kept them in the wilderness. He rained manna from on high. He brought them to the promised land. He destroyed their enemies. God has already proven his character, his immutable character to them. It's their job and it's our job to trust God and to trust his faithfulness. That's the issue. The Bible says it's impossible to please God without faith. And we're trying to earn blessings, and that's not pleasing God. Our faith should be in Jesus. We, we ought to trust in the finished work of Christ, that Jesus already accomplished what we could never accomplish. He, he's already, amen, won for us and purchased for us a salvation and a relationship that allows us to experience the blessings of God. First thing you've got to do is trust faithfulness of the Lord. Come on, bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Wait a minute. First strategy, if we're going to uh, receive all of the blessings of God, we're going to trust the faithfulness of God. 
trust his character and depend on his faithfulness. But then second strategy, uh, we need to humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God. Humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God. I'm in the text. I'm still in verse one. Listen to what it says. It, it says that if you faithfully obey the voice of the Lord your God, here it is, being careful to do all his commandments that I command you today, the Lord your God will set you high above all nations. Wait a minute. He, there's the word commandments and the word command. If Moses is talking and Moses is basically saying, I, Moses, command you to keep the commandments of God. So what we have, we have the nation um, and there are two levels of authority. There is Moses who is the representative of God and ultimately there is God. The commandments come from God, but, but God has revealed the commandments to Moses. And so Moses has some level of authority as he represents God. So here's, here's the problem. The problem for the people to properly trust God and to properly obey God, they have to properly trust the people that God places above them. The people that God has given authority over them. So Moses is a person of authority to the nation Israel. So when God told Moses uh, to deliver the, the sacrifice, the Passover lamb, they had to trust Moses. When Moses told the people, God said that he's going to deliver us. We need to make haste so that we can bounce out of Egypt. They, they have to trust the authority of Moses, and even when they went into, amen, Mount Sinai, and Moses brought the law, this is what the Lord says, the law, and even in our text, he is retelling the law, he's saying, hey, Moses is in a position of authority, and ultimately, he represents the authority of God, here it is, if we are going to receive the blessings of God, it's because we humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God. This concept of humility in this context means that we voluntarily make ourselves lower and that the person or uh, the principle or the word or scripture that is over us, that we yield to that authority. This, this is critical because many of us have a problem with authority. There are some people, can nobody tell you what to do? You've been doing your own thing all your life. Nobody can tell you what to do. And if that's the reality, then you will not receive the blessings of the Lord. If there's nobody that you will humble yourself and that they can speak over your life, they can give you direction, and you won't do it, then you won't get blessed because you will not humble yourself. The Bible says God gives grace to the humble. And if you are not going to humble and, and, and submit to the person, then how can you submit to the God whom you cannot even see? And so here it is. The, 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 the pathway, the, the way we access the blessings is through humility. Even Jesus. Jesus had to humble himself, even though he is co-equal with the Father and with the Holy Spirit. He is God. He is equal with them. He voluntarily humbled himself so that he could be under the authority of his father for the glory of God. That, that's our model. And we need to humble ourselves to the authority of Christ. Here it is. Jesus is Lord. If you've put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ for salvation, he's not only your savior, he's the Lord, which means he's the head of your life. He is the authority of your life. And if you will not yield and humble yourself under the authority of Christ, you are then disqualified for the, from the blessings. I hear what you're saying. You're saying you know, well, it's my body. I can do what I want. No, it ain't your body. 
your body don't belong to you. If you are in Christ, your body belongs to the Lord. I hear what you're saying. It's my money. I earned it. I know it ain't. Your money ain't your money. Everything that you are and everything that you have belongs to God. The first law of stewardship is God owns everything, including you, including me. We were bought with a price. Jesus purchased us with his precious blood. He's in the position of authority. And if you will not humble yourself under the mighty hand of Christ, then you won't be eligible. You won't have access to receive the blessings of God. Christ is our head. I, I like I like how uh, Peter says it. I, I, I like Peter. Peter keeps it 100. Listen to what he says. 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 6 through 10. He says, Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that at the proper time he may exalt you, casting all your anxieties on him because he cares for you. Be sober-minded, be watchful. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion seeking someone to devour. Resist him, firm in your faith, knowing that the same kinds of suffering are being experienced by your brotherhood throughout the world. And after you have suffered a little while, the God of all grace who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ will himself restore, confirm, strengthen, and establish you. I love that. Peter says, listen, you ought to humble yourselves under the mighty hand the hand of God represents his authority. Humble yourself under the mighty authority of God. And he says he will exalt you in due time, in due season. If you, if you humble yourself under Christ, Christ will lift you up and prosper you and promote you in due season. But then Peter says something real good. He, he says, but, but you're going to have to suffer. Don't, don't miss this. See, if we want the blessings without the suffering but if we are going to be found in Christ, that means we follow the pattern of Christ. And Jesus' pattern is to suffer, then to be exalted. The pattern of Jesus is to suffer, then to be glorified. The pattern of Jesus is to suffer, then to be blessed. And so he says, when you trust Jesus, and when you submit to his authority, you're going to suffer for a while. But then, in God's due season... He will exalt you. He will bless you. You will have access to the blessings that God has ordained for you. Let me give you another example. It's Mark chapter 3. Jesus goes on the mountain and calls his apostles unto him. And they agree to be disciples and apostles of Jesus. That's chapter 3 of Mark. But then the very next chapter, chapter 4, they get in a boat and they face a storm. And, and they feel like they're going to die because that, that's the reality, that the moment you sign up with Jesus, the moment you humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, we will experience suffering. But here's the good news. The blessing of God's faithfulness is, first of all, he's a very present help in your time of need. So God is present even in your suffering, but your suffering is time limited. And when the due time comes, he promises to confirm you to restore you, to strengthen you, and to establish you. That, that, that he promises to bless you. But you've got to humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. It ain't about you. It's not about what you want. It's not about what you think. It's not about your opinion. What, what did Jesus say? And what does he want? And what's his will? And ultimately, what's his command? And when we yield, listen, young people, to the command of God that's revealed in Scripture, we have the Spirit to empower us. So now we have the ability to obey when we yield and we say, listen, I want to I, I wanna serve the Lord. I, I want to do what he wants. I'm willing to obey and trust him. Then the Holy Spirit will give us power that we can access the blessings of God. I'm headed to my seat. I just stopped by to tell you about the blessing of God's faithfulness. That even when we are faithless, God is faithful. Even when we don't 
amen, keep our end of the bargain. God keeps his end of the bargain. God is faithful. And when we trust God's character, his faithfulness, and when we humble ourselves to the mighty hand of God, God then will pour out blessings, not just eternally, but even naturally. But I'm headed to my seat. But the third strategy I want to give to you is that you are to chase after the blesser rather than the blessing. That, that you are to chase after the blesser rather than the blessing. Too many of us we, we chase after the blessings. We're, we're chasing after money. We're chasing after prestige. We're chasing after wealth. We're chasing after fame and fortune. We're chasing after the adulation of the masses. We want to get our Twitter account and our Instagram likes up. We we want people to like us. We, we're, we're chasing these things, houses, and land and blessings and and what I see in the text is not to chase the blessings, but to chase the blesser. Don't, don't, don't chase the provision. You ought to chase the provider. You, you ought to chase the one who, who has a man, the grace that is sufficient, and he has a storehouse. He owns a cattle on a thousand hill, which means that he'll never run dry of blessings, chase him rather than the blessings. If you chase the blessings, they will fly away. But if you chase the blesser, then you'll have an endless supply of the blessings. Let, let me prove what I'm saying. Um, verse two, it, it says that, that, that if you obey the voice of the Lord, he, he says that I will call, God will call these blessings to come upon you and to overtake you. Oh, don't miss that. He, he says that if you obey faithfully the voice of the Lord, God will cause these blessings, all, all the blessings listed, uh, verses 1 through 14, you, you'll be blessed in the city, you'll be blessed in the field, you'll be blessed when you come and when you go, you'll be the head and not the tail, you'll be the lender, you won't be the borrower, your children will be blessed, your, 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 your uh, finances will be blessed. You'll be a blessing to the other people around you, other nations, other communities. They they will look at you and they will know that God is real and you will have an impact and you will be blessed. Everything you touch, you will be blessed. But listen to what he says. He says that if you trust and obey God faithfully, I will cause these blessings to come upon you and to overtake you. Here's what this concept of overtake means. It means to pursue. So he says that instead of you pursuing, instead of you chasing after the blessings, God will call the blessings to chase after you. God will call the blessings to pursue you. Um, and it also means that, that, that the blessings will pursue you and you don't know when they're coming. They will only come in God's due. You won't be able to handle it. You won't be expecting it. It, it comes when you're not looking for it, but amen, it will pursue you, catch you, and ultimately overtake you. Let me, let me try to give you an illustration. My, my, my nephew, he, uh, he, he, he got a dog, and it's a big dog. It, it's it's uh, a greyhound, and, and so he asked me to, to, to dog sit for him while he went to work and and I noticed some things about the dog um um the dog would 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 sit at the window in the living room and watch and when he would see my truck pull into the driveway the dog would leave the living room and come to the kitchen where the door was and soon as I opened the door this playful big dog would just jump upon me and he would be so happy to see me. He would just jump and jump on me. And he's a big dog. But but then I noticed something. That, that after he jumped upon me, that, then wherever I went, the dog followed me. If I went into the kitchen, the dog followed me. If I went into the dining room, the dog followed me. If I went into the living room, the dog followed me. When I went upstairs, the dog, even when I tried to go to the bathroom, the dog followed me. And, and, and here it is. That's how it is with God's blessings. That when you chase the blesser 
when you pursue the blesser, God will call the blessings to act like that dog. That, that the blessings will see you coming. The blessings will get to your destination. And that when you get to the place that God has ordained, the blessing is there waiting on you. But that's not all. When God opens up the door, then the blessing will jump on you and cover you and overwhelm you. And then any place you try to go, you're not going to be able to shake the blessing. If you try to go to the left, the blessing is right there behind you. If you try to go to the right, the blessing is right there. If you're trying to go up or down or left or right, you can't shake the blessing because God says, I will cause the blessings to come upon you, to overtake you, to follow you wherever you go. That's why David said in Psalm 23, he said, he anoints my head with oil. My cup runneth over surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house, in the presence of the Lord forever stop chasing the blessing and you ought to learn how to chase the blesser you ought to learn how to chase God because when I trust God and when I get into the presence of God he says that there is joy forevermore in the presence of the Lord there's fullness of joy and pleasures at his right hand forevermore stop chasing money stop chasing pleasure. Stop chasing the things of this world. We ought to chase the Lord. We ought to want to get into his presence. We ought to run after him. We ought to want a closer walk with Jesus. I'm headed to my seat, but I'm reminded of the song by Vashon Mitchell, I'm chasing after you. He says, I'm chasing after you no matter what I got to do because I need you more and more. I'm chasing after you and I'm praising my way through I, more and more. Listen, I love this. He, he understands the first reason why you want to chase after God is because you need him more and more. I'm not going to be able to obey you. I'm not going to be able to do what you've called unless I have your power, unless I have your presence because I need you. And so I'm chasing after you, but sometimes when I'm chasing after God, the road gets heavy, the road gets difficult, and so I've got to praise my way through. But here's the good news about praise even when you're trying to get to God and you're praising your way through, God says that I inhabit the praises of my people. So no matter where you are, even if you're far from God, when you start praising God, God shows up in the presence of your praise. And so you've got the presence of God right there. And somebody today needs to learn how to praise their way through your circumstance. You've been trying, amen, to strategize and figure out and manipulate how I can get over this crisis. And God is saying, if you trust my character and you look back over your life and you remember what I've done for you, then you ought to start praising me right here, right now. Who, who am I preaching to? And you, you're stressed and you're worried and you don't know how you're going to make it. I dare you to praise him right now and to praise your way through your anxiety. I, I dare you to praise your way through your stress. I, I dare you to praise your way through your doubt. I, I, I dare you to praise your way through your fears and watch when your help comes and Watch how God through his spirit will show up. The glory of his presence will show up and you will have hope and you will have help and you will have encouragement to run on just a little while longer and see what the end is on me. And here it is that when you start praising God, you'll realize that you are already blessed that the blessing is not in the rays. The blessing is not in the new car. No, no. The blessing is not in the new house, but the blessing is the faithfulness of God, that I am a child of God, and I love the Lord, and he loves me, and I'm secure in my salvation, and even when I stray from the path, even when I don't do what I'm supposed to do, his mercy suits my case. His 
Grace is sufficient and he will never let go of me. Even when I'm trying to push God away, God will never take his hand off of my life. That's the blessing of God's faithfulness. That's the real blessing. You've got to chase after the Lord. I don't know about you, but I'm chasing after the Lord. Whatever I got to do, because I need him. I'm not going to make it without him. I, I can't continue on this path. I can't be all that he's called me to be. I can't take care of my family. I can't live my life. I can't pastor this church. I can't be a father. I can't do what I do without the faithfulness of my God. I need him more and more. Listen, young people, don't, don't wait until you're 50 or 60 to realize how much you need the Lord. Solomon said in Ecclesiastes, remember the creator now in your youth. Trust him now. Trust his faithfulness now. Depend on him now. Don't depend on your grades. Don't depend on your looks. Don't depend on your connections. You depend on the Lord. You trust the character of God and submit to the lordship of Christ to chase after him and you will be blessed beyond measure. I'm a living witness that when I chased after God and I trust the character of God and I submitted to the authority of God, he blessed me more than I could ever imagine. God has poured out blessings that I can't even count. I don't have room enough to receive. And it's not because I deserve it or because I've been so good. It's because God has been faithful. Come on, bless the name the Lord, I dare you to praise him. I dare you to magnify him. I dare you to say thank you for being faithful. Thank you for loving me even when I was unlovable. Thank you for being faithful even when I was faithless. Thank you, God, for your grace and your mercy and your unconditional love. I dare you to bless him right now. Come on, bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. If you're here today and you know that you need Jesus, you, you, you understand that no matter how hard you try, you can't keep the commandments of God, which means you're under the condemnation and the curse of God. But if you put your faith in Jesus alone for salvation, if you believe in your heart that God sent Jesus to die for your sins, and God raised him from the dead. If you put your faith in the finished work of Jesus and allow Jesus to come into your heart right here, right now, you can be saved, you can be blessed, and you will never be cursed again. If that's you, just simply type in the chat, I want to be saved. And you can be saved right here, right now. Or perhaps you're already saved, but, but you've been out of church for a while. You have not been a part of a local church fellowship, and you're not growing in grace. And so you're eligible for the blessings. You're entitled to the blessings, but you don't have access to the blessings. Come grow with us, and we'll help you to access all that God has for your life. I love you, God. Bless you. If that's you, type in the chat. I want to be a member of the Prince of Peace Church, and we will welcome you to our family. God bless you. At the mention of your name, every knee must bow, every tongue confess that you are, you are Lord. Yes, you are. At the mention of your name, every knee must bow, every tongue confess that you are, you are Lord. Yes, you are. Cause at the mention of your name, every knee must bow, every tongue confess that you are, you are, Lord. Yes, you are. Jesus, you are, Lord. Oh.